All right, welcome everyone. And tonight we've got a special treat. I have Pastor Lisa Cortez Bast. He happens to be my, not just my sister in Christ, but my sister in law. And tonight we're going to talk about evangelism. And so, what is evangelism? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's a big question. Um, I think a lot of people make it more complex than it needs to be, but honestly, it, it's sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in both word and deed wherever God places you. All right, well, so whose job is it to evangelize? Sorry, technical difficulty, my fault. That's all right. <laughs> So Roger's asking, you know, whose responsibility is it to evangelize? And I just really believe it's one of the first commands that Jesus gives us as believers. And it's our way to partner with God's great work um, on here on earth. And so I believe for every for every believer, everyone who professes to follow Jesus, it's their responsibility um, to make sure that they're sharing the good news wherever they go, wherever God has placed them. Um, but I also think of the scriptures that remind us, you know, that we don't know uh, that people are not going to know unless somebody goes to them and is sent to them. And so who else is God going to send, but he's going to send the people that, that know him and love him and are following him. Right. So does that mean I have to go on missions trips to evangelize? <laughs> <laughs> no, as much as, you know, when I, mean, I think about like sayings like, you know, bloom where you're planted or, or, you know, just like, do you thrive wherever um, God has placed you? I think about their scriptures in the Old Testament that tell us that God intentionally places us in cities and places. And so why would God do that? Well, I believe that God does that because he wants us people in places. So like if I'm with my neighbor or if I'm, you know, going to the barista or if I'm going to the doctor's office, there are opportunities for me to be able to share what God is doing in my life and what God can do for other people, but also to be able to hear other people's stories and to listen to where um, the Holy Spirit might be nudging them or where God might be speaking to them where I can step in in that space and I can listen well. Um, I can ask God for opportunities to pray for them, or I can even just um, boldly step through a door that God might be opening for me to say, this is where God is at work in my life. I hear your story, and this is how God's story intersects with your story. So it's not just a job for the evangelist. No. <laughs> you know, it's really hard because a lot of people would say, oh, I'm not called to evangelism. I'm like, or evangelism is scary, or there's people who are like very good at that. And I would agree. I think there's like some people that God has like specially gifted where that's a passion for them. It's always at the top of their list. But I would say because it's something that every believer has a responsibility towards that God gives us a measure of grace to be able to when the door is ready, if we're listening and we're hearing that when a door opens, um, that we can still boldly and faithfully take it and trust God to do the heavy lifting because I'm not responsible for somebody getting saved. That's God's job. But I do get to partner with God's work by saying, yes, if God opens the door for me to walk through it. All right. That leaves me. That answers a lot of questions right there. So everyone who's a believer, everyone who's accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior has a responsibility to evangelize. Well, I would even say like more so than a responsibility, Roger, is that there's a part where if if I'm if part of my walk um, in being a Christ follower is I become more and more like Jesus, um, I can't get closer to Jesus without getting closer to broken people. You know, because Jesus always moved towards people that that needed, you know, he was called to heal the sick. And so there's a part in there where if I'm following Jesus, Jesus is more likely than not going to take me close to people that need to hear about him. Um, and so there's a place where as God is refining me, um, I, I would hope and my heart should start breaking for people um, that also don't know the Lord. I should be compelled, you know, with love in the same way. And I just think about, um, you know. New Testament reminds us like how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the good news. Like there's a part where there's something beautiful about that to God. Um, and so I get to partner in that beauty when I go to people. And so it's not just a responsibility because that feels like very transactional, mm -hmm. but boy, if I am becoming more like Jesus, my heart should be breaking. I should be looking for people that feel like they need the Lord. Yeah. And I have noticed that the closer I get to Jesus, the more I want to tell people about Jesus. Yeah. So what do you think? Why do you think that is? Because I'm becoming more like Jesus through the renewing of the mind. Yeah. Through, yeah. through the studying of the scriptures, as well as that one-on-one -on -one time in prayer with God the Father. Yes. And I would say, you know, I think about like Philip in Acts 8, you know, when he comes across the eunuch. And um, he asked him, he said, well, what are you reading? And he's reading Isaiah. And so the eunuch even tells him, he said, well, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch tells him, how do I know unless somebody tells me? And so there's a part where um, even just being available like that, if I'm if I'm willing to be next to people, if I'm willing to move towards people, if somebody has a question, well, they're going to go to somebody who's next to them. Yeah. And so if I'm saying, Jesus, I'll go wherever you take me. And Jesus takes you next to, you know, a modern day eunuch or takes you next to somebody who has questions. 
Um, how great to be in a position where if somebody has questions, you're listening to Jesus, your heart is ready and open to do what he asks you to do, and then your heart is breaking the same way his breaks for that one lost sheep. Yeah, I have had times when people were yelling at me and calling me some not so nice names. My only thought was, how can I bring them to Jesus? Mm -hmm. They're so hurt and so broken. How can I help them find Jesus? Yeah. When And, you know, in the old days, before I got so close to, to God, I, my reaction would have been, well, I'll show them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll crack them upside the head. <laughs> yeah, and it's so hard, right? Because with, sometimes we feel like if somebody rejects Jesus in that moment, they're really attacking, you know, or if yeah. they attack us, they're attacking Jesus. If they attack Jesus, they're attacking us. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes people are so broken, it's like a wound that is that is um, tender, you know, and you touch that wound and it's like, you know, they pull back from you. And part of, you know, God opens the door sometimes and it's a big door and you can run right through it, you know, and you're able to like share the whole story of the gospel. And sometimes the doors open just a tiny crack and God just lets you see enough where you can pray, you know, and it might not be the time. It mm -hmm. might not be the time to like unload the whole gospel. It might be just a time to keep taking one faithful step forward or to be still and, and lean into what God says. Otherwise, you'll be reactive to however somebody's experiencing what you're saying. And and that's not always the best place in two because they can yeah. poke back on your own. Wounds. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of uh, Greg Kokel. I re remember I read a book of his that talking about tactics for you know sharing the gospel and things and he's saying you know you don't have to close the deal you don't have to be like a hard, <laughs> high pressure car salesman he says, maybe maybe you just put a little stone in their shoe and way you make them uncomfortable yeah. and make them think about what yeah. you've told them yeah or, or maybe you're just planting the seed and god will send somebody else to water that seed that's right and maybe even somebody else yet will, will harvest yep and actually bring them to jesus and the scriptures remind us of that too, you know, where Paul says one plants and one waters, but mm -hmm. God brings the increase. Yeah. And so um, sometimes we panic and we don't do anything because we're like, well, I, I can't finish or I don't know what to say. Or what if they ask me to pray for them and I don't know what to do. And you just might be the seed planter, but you might be the seed water. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because God brings the increase. It's not my job to close the deal. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and people are not projects, right? They're not card. <laughs> they're not car deals. <laughs> And so being able to say, God, where, wherever you put me in the process, I'll say yes and to being faithful in that process. So we don't need to put them in a Holy Ghost headlock until they submit to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you, you really don't know. You, I mean, you really right. don't know where somebody's at in their journey, you know, and, and I, you know, I think it takes an extreme amount of listening, both listening, like, you know, sensitive to what the Holy Spirit might be asking you to do. Um, but also sensitive to where somebody's at in their own journey to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to like, you know, dig in a little bit, but I'm not going to try to like, you know, push something on you, you know, and harm you either. Yeah. I actually came across a situation like that where a brother in Christ was trying to share the gospel with someone and they thought they were being pressured, you know, because I was trying to help too, you know, adding here and there. They said, Hey, wait a minute. I don't like this. I said, well, wait a minute. We're not trying to pressure you. We're just letting you know salvation is available. Yeah. If you want it, it's available. And they ended up accepting Jesus Christ right there. Yeah. And they found out we weren't trying to twist their arm, that we were just, hey, we want you to know this is available. Yeah. Yep. Well, and you think about that, right? That's the same thing that Jesus did. I mean, there are times when he went out and healed and it was miraculous and instantaneous. Uh, you know, there are times where it was, you know, like he healed the blind man and it was like gradual. You know, I see you walking around like trees. And then he, you know, he did some additional work. But even the conversation with Nicodemus, you know, that sometimes it's just sitting and answering some questions, yeah. you know, and being available that way. And so there's a part where we can look at Jesus as the model for even when he was talking about himself. I mean, my goodness, I think about when, you know, Timothy doubted, you know, he was so kind to him, even in the middle of that. He says, it's OK, just, you know, touch, touch me and see. Um, but blessed are those who, who don't touch me yeah. and still believe, you know. Yeah. And so how do we go about evangelizing, doing evangelism? <laughs> Well, I think it's, you know, that's such a funny question, Roger, because, um, you know, I would say for most people that feel very passionate about evangelism, it's not about like going to evangelize. It's God help me to see the opportunities around me. Um, I think we all have opportunities and whether it's just prayer, whether it's inviting somebody, you know, just for conversation, whether it's actually like breaking down the scriptures for people. I think more often than not, it's a, a sensitivity to say, God, I, I live in a broken world that is waiting your return. And while I'm here, Who's around me that needs to know that you desperately love them and that you paid the ultimate price for them and that you want to be in a relationship with them and then just to have your eyes open. But this, and so you have to be listening. You have to, you have to know your word. You have to be like sensitive to what God might be doing, 
But I would say too, you just, um, you have to be unafraid to try and feel like you're failing. Yeah. You know, I think for most people, uh, we feel like evangelism is something we all should be doing and we're terrified. It's the one mm -hmm. thing we're like, we hope somebody else does it yeah. or I'll bring you to church and my pastor can do it and then I don't have to do it. Yeah. Um, but most people just want to be heard and they want just somebody to talk to them, you know, and then I'm amazed, especially in the United States, how many people now, um, you know, two generations ago, a lot of people knew church stories or knew Bible stories. And now it's not true. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who, this is the first generation that have grown up not in Christian homes, mm -hmm. you know, in the same way. And there are stories we take for granted that people don't know, yeah. you know, and stories about how Jesus loves them or, you know, references to the lost sheep, David and Goliath. You know, I had a young person in their twenties ask me who that was. Wow. And I was like, well, what do you mean you don't know who that is? And there's a part where those stories, like those stories don't mean the same thing to them. And yeah. being able to stop and be like, oh my gosh, let me tell you a story, you know, about a young king who was looked over by everybody, but God saw something special in him. Yeah. You know, and and even in the middle of the face of a giant, that God did something through him that he could have never done on his own. And, you know, and, and tell me, like, what resonates with you about that? Have you ever felt like that? You know, yeah. that you felt like everybody passed you up and nobody saw you. Mm -hmm. And like, do you know what God sees you? You know, and to be able to just walk right into that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Whether it's evangelizing or even praying for people, overcoming that, your flesh, that's been the biggest barrier for me, too, because your flesh doesn't want to, want you to do that stuff. It's like, what, are you crazy? You look like a fool. They, yeah. They'll reject you. They don't want you. They want to hear that. They'll hate you if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... <laughs> You know, I mean, who I would rather look like a fool for God's sake. You yes. know what I mean? Like there's yes. a part where I'm, I'm foolish because I'm telling about the Savior who loves me. Like it that's not that bad. Um, and I know for some people, they're really worried about pushing people away mm -hmm. that they really like love and care for. And I would just say that there's like there's a gentleness still to that. You know, like yeah. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. You know, I'm gentle and lowly mm -hmm. um, and meek. And so there's a part where where Jesus, even in the middle of that, like. You know, the Jesus who flipped tables was also the Jesus that was tender enough where people who were hurt and, and would reject him were still, you know, he still made himself available where you could come close. And I think that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, you do it. Exalt those who are humble themselves and humble those who exalt themselves. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But I'm just curious, Roger. So I know some of the questions you're asking me for some of your listeners who um, who regularly listen. What do you think are some of the challenges that they would experience in evangelism? Well, I mean, probably number one is overcoming the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know that, you know, just that anxiety of how do I start? How do I share the gospel? Yeah. You know, am I going to look like an idiot? Are they going to reject me? Yeah. But then, do you love them enough to risk it? Really, is the question. Yeah. Do you love God enough to risk it? Yeah. You know, it's so interesting that you would say that because I think people start getting very anxious because they want to do it the right way. Like, is there a right thing for me to say? What is a, What are the right things for me to say? And I would just say that um, for people who are just saying, well, I get, I get tripped up. Or, what if somebody asks me to pray and I don't know what to say? Or what if they ask me about a scripture and I don't know the answer? It's okay to be honest and say, I don't know. Yeah. But what a great invitation to say, well, can we study it together? Yeah. You know, or I, I'd be glad to learn more about that too. Would you be okay having coffee and we could like study the scriptures about, or what does the Bible say about this? Or if you have more questions, let's talk. Um, but I would also say we've, we just got to get really like, we, I say this at work a lot. We have to get ridiculously good at celebrating when somebody tries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes we get in the habit of only celebrating like, oh, somebody said yes to Jesus. And we're like, praise God. And yes, absolutely. Praise God. But we should get just as good in the body of Christ to be like, you went and talked to somebody yeah. that you didn't know. Yeah. Like, and even if you're like, well, it didn't go as great as I thought, but I'm like, praise God, you were bold. That's yeah. amazing. You know, and celebrating that too, because, um, you know, you can share the gospel story right from where you're at today. You know what the gospel means to you today. You mm -hmm. know, and if you don't, that's a good prayer prompt for you to start. Jesus, what are you saying to me about the good news today? Like, how does it look today in my life? Instead of feeling you have to have 20 scriptures memorized and you have to have every answer to every question somebody can answer because you want to be able to say, you know what? I don't know the answer to that mm -hmm. right now, but I can tell you this. I can tell you that Jesus was real to me today when I was so stressed out, you know, with the kids. I remember when Jesus was real to me when we didn't have enough money to eat. You know, I, I love the good news because we, you know, when my grandmother died, this is how the good news comforted me. You know, mm -hmm. there are things that you can talk about yeah. with the gospel without feeling like you have to have the whole thing memorized and you have mm -hmm. to go through every step. Yeah. Yeah. 
how Jesus is real in your own life, that's a big witness. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And something that you don't know if, if you don't spend time in prayer every day <laughs> yeah. and talk to the Lord every day. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of the first step for most people. Okay, so we don't have to go on a mission trip to Darfur to share the gospel. No, although people <laughs> there also need the gospel. Um, but what I would say is that, boy, your expression for global mission should be your care for everybody in every mission field. You know, and so you should say, I have a missional mindset, whether I'm here, you know, in, in the, the heartland or whether I'm here, you know, in the badlands. And yeah. so there's a part wherever God has called you to, you should have a heart for the mission of Jesus wherever you are. And it could be that God calls you overseas, and it could be that God calls you to your backdoor neighbor. But while you're at the grocery store, you might as well share the gospel. You might as well share <laughs> the gospel, both in word and deed, right? And so, you know, there's um, uh, one of my good friends um, says that he's like, if if it was unnecessary to use words, then, you know, then by walking through the door, everybody would say, oh, we love Jesus. And yeah. so there's a part we're required to use our words. Yeah. And that's okay. Um but it should be it should be that just like Jesus in John 17, John 15 through 17, I say what my father says. I do what my father I only I only say the things my father says. I only do the things my father does. Um, and they were winsome for Jesus' time, even though some people didn't understand it and hated it. Um, but it opened the door for salvation. It's winsome in our time, and some people will love it or hate it, but it will open the door for salvation. Well, really, if they if they listen long enough to hear the gospel, that's a victory in itself. Yeah. Well, again, right. This, who knows? They, you might be planting a seed. You might be yeah. tossing it from the other car. You know, <laughs> um, they might not. They might not sit so long. But that again, that's the beauty and the mystery of God is you don't know how God is preparing their hearts. You don't know if you're watering something that's already been planted. You don't know whether it's fifty seconds, whether it's fifty minutes. You don't know. So, who do I share the gospel with then? You share with everybody, <laughs> Roger. Um, <laughs> Right. There's, there is both word and deed. There is a part where, you know, there's conversations like we're having now. And I hope it's an encouragement to your listeners um, because this is the good news of the gospel. We have a story to share because Jesus went to the cross and died for us and then rose again from the dead so that we could have life eternal both here and in the kingdom to come. And so there's a part that gives us something to talk about right now. But at the same time, that also gives me space to love my neighbor. You know, that there's a part where if somebody's sick, I should be taking you know, food to them. If somebody is broken, I shouldn't be using it as an opportunity to hammer in on them. Yeah. You know, I should be like loving them in ways. And it's not one is better than the other. Both of those things work together. It is not like proclamation versus declaration. It is or proclamation versus demonstration. Um, you don't just do the gospel and then say the gospel. You are the gospel. You mm -hmm. live the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's incarnation. That's where those two things converge. And so I don't say, well, I'm doing a lot of good things, so I don't need to say anything. Or I, I'm always telling the truth, so I don't need to like go serve somebody. Mm -hmm. Jesus does both, and we do both because as he as he was God incarnate, we are trying to be like Jesus also. And so, in our Christ likeness, as we follow Jesus, we do what Jesus does because Jesus did what the Father would do. Mm -hmm. In word and deed. In word and deed. All right. So, what are the different methods of evangelism? I mean, I've heard of Roman Road. Yeah. Um, I personally like the way Ray Comfort does it on YouTube. He's a, does. You know, street corner evangelism. Yes. You know, and there's so many different types, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. Like the body's so diverse that there's a lot of different ways that God uses people to do it. And I think, and so I never tell people there's like a better way, you know, or there's yeah. only one way because I really believe there, there are lots of ways that God uses and that the body all works together to do that. Um, I, I firmly believe that um, more than anything else before, if God's calling you to do street evangelism, if God's calling you to do like quiet evangelism, if you're using tracks, whatever it might be. Um, Roger, I would say uh, the most important thing is you know how God has wired you and you understand what God has called you to do. And probably number one, you gotta understand what the gospel is before you can share it. Yep, and I would say what the gospel is like, uh, you know, what the gospel is according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. but actually how the gospel is like living into your own life too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a part where you need to be able to say, like you need to be able to say how the gospel is impacting you today. Yeah. You know, like if you're just reciting what the Bible says, oh my goodness, when somebody asks you a tough question <laughs> and you haven't thought it through, you're like, uh, I gotta go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a part like you, sh you should know the scripture. You should know what Jesus says about, says about that. And you should be able to be so comfortable with your own story. And so I think of um, places like the Faith Story app, 
um, and other places where it just kind of helps you put your arms around your story, mm -hmm. you know, and just say, okay, if I only have 30 seconds to share my story, what, you know, what can I say? Yeah. Um, and it, I love those resources because um, some people have never sat down and wrestled with how the gospel shows up in their own story. And I'll tell you, that's a great way. If you feel like I, I don't, I'm not passionate about evangelism yeah. um, to think about how God took you from where you were. Mm -hmm. um, even if you grew up in a Christian home, but the fact that God has preserved you, the God, the fact that God has put his arms around you is a, is a miracle for a lot of people right mm -hmm. now too. Um, but getting in touch with your own story will break you and humble you in a way. Cause you're just like, Jesus, if it weren't for you, you know, on my best days, I was never good enough, but on my worst days, I was never bad, too bad enough. You know, yeah. that in the middle of that, Jesus said, I, st I still, I still went to the cross for you and you have to get comfortable with your own story. Well, that brings up another question. Who can be saved? Oh, Roger. <laughs> I believe that it's God, well, the scripture says um, that it's God's will that none should perish, mm -hmm. right? And so really depending on where you fall on the theological spectrum, um, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, God knows and we don't know. Yeah. And so it doesn't excuse me for my responsibility mm -hmm. to go out consistently and say, God, if you open the doors, I need to share. Because again, you know, how will they know unless someone is sent? Yeah. You know, Paul tells us, you know, and if it is blessed are the feet of those who are, um, you know, our feet are bearing good news or that our feet are shed with, you know, shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that there's something that is tangible about us going, yeah. you know, our feet are blessed to go and do that work. And so it doesn't matter to me if somebody says yes or no, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it matters in the sense that God is calling me to obedience to go share that because God figures that out. I, mm -hmm. I don't figure, I don't yeah. carry the burden of that. Yeah. Um, but I do carry the responsibility and should carry the compulsion of love to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to know that Jesus loves them. Yeah, because if you're carrying the love of Christ, you want to share it with everybody. You should. It should be that good, right? Yeah. <laughs> the love of Christ compels us. So there should be something about it that's so tangible and so intoxicating in our own lives. It should be like that that fragrant aroma that's like, man, what do what is happening there? What is going on in their lives that I I don't have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the way we live our lives is a witness. Yeah. You know, and we know that the, if they know that we are Christians, if we know that we are Christ followers by our love, you know, and if it's the goodness of God that draws people to repentance, um, you know, there's a part about that, that, that um, again, how will they know he's good? How will they know that we're experiencing goodness? Mm -hmm. You know, how will they know that uh, we are following Jesus, if not for our love for one another, but if we're closed up and hold off and, mm -hmm. you know, we're not talking, you don't know who we are or where we are. And we're definitely not talking to people who are not like us. Well, then, you know, how, how will they know? Yeah. Yeah. They might think we're all the frozen chosen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and right, so some people are frozen, maybe because they don't want to, some are frozen out of fear, and that's not yeah. God's perfect love for them either, Yeah. right? So there's a part where it's just like, if, if, if being afraid is causing you to be to feel frozen and locked up in that, that um, there's a man, I hope they feel the freedom of God's love in that too, because fear yeah. is not from the Lord either. No, it's not. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. There you go. So they ought to be able to see a little bit of joy in us too. <laughs> <laughs> Evangelism is joyful. Oh, so Roger, what would that look like for you? If you joy in evangelism, what would that look like for you? Oh, I definitely wouldn't come up and say, hey, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell. Okay. <laughs> that, that would not be joyful. So what would joy look like then? It would look for probably look something like, hey, you know, let me, can I tell you about Jesus? You know what he's done for me? Yeah. I, I was miserable. I was wretched. I was lost. But he saved me. Yeah. I didn't even deserve it. And he still saved me. I wasn't worthy. He saved me. Yeah. 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 See, and there's, um, think about the beauty of that, right? Like, think about the the joy in that and like the weightiness of that. Yeah. You know, and that there's a part where that's, you know, I'm not fighting with you on that. I can't fight your own experience, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, but what, but you show up with genuine, you know, with your genuine self and you're just like, man, this is what Jesus did for me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember going back to Ray Comfort, you know, because I've watched a lot of his videos on YouTube. Remember, he said that we do him a real disservice when we say that there's a God shaped hole in your life. And if you'll just accept Jesus, everything's going to be beautiful. Yeah, no. Nope. No, because Jesus promised us we will have trials and tribulations in this life. Yes. In this world, we're going to have trouble. But yeah. The beauty of the gospel is if you accept Jesus, Jesus will be there to go through it with you and yeah. see you through it. Yeah. So, I mean, you think about hope. Yeah. and peace you know i mean yeah. all the things that are promised to us unconditional love 
You know, I don't know how people are facing the trials and tribulations of this world, yeah. you know, and, and don't know that there's, there's a savior who loves them and that they, they can't earn their way into more love that they don't yeah. have to like fake hope, yeah. you know, that they can be free, you know, from feeling like, you know, afraid all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that's the promise of Jesus. And then the promise of like the, you know, the priesthood of all believers. Right. So I'm in a community now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not just by myself and Jesus has just saved me and I'm alone, but I've got other people who are praying for me. And I've yeah. got a family of believers that, that are loving me. And as they're walking towards Jesus, I'm walking with them towards mm -hmm. Jesus into Christ likeness. And now I've got a whole group of people that can, that can stand with me in the middle yeah. of, of life's tough journey. Yeah. That's so true. Mm -hmm. And that, that community, that, that's important. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the reasons we we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Yep. Is because we need each other. Yes. Yep. And, and not just when we're having problems, but, you know, each of us have different talents, different strengths, different gifts. And so when we all come together, you know, in love in Christ, we can help each other. Yeah. We can build each other up. Absolutely. We can help each other make it to the next level as we mature in Christ. Right. And that's part of our testimony, mm -hmm. right? That's, that is part of the evangelism work is just like, man, it's not just like you get to have a right relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. which is more than enough. Yeah. But at the same time to be like, man, there is a community of people that are committed to loving you because loving Jesus, I'm committed to loving you, you know? And that's, that's why we need people who are like very gifted in evangelism, right? For yeah. those of us who maybe feel like I'm not mm -hmm. as gifted, that they're like cheering you on. Like mm -hmm. you've got this. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to be rejected. No worries. <laughs> you know, keep trying. Um, but then it also takes the people who are good shepherds, you know, and they're yeah. just like, I'm caring for you. I know this is hard. People are a good teacher. You know, all the things that make up the body of Christ. And wouldn't you want the people who, you know, are lonely and mm -hmm. are, feel lost, you know, yeah. and feel disconnected to have that too, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, in my own story, I'm, I knew I wasn't good enough, but I didn't have to clean myself up before I came to Jesus. Yeah. I came to Jesus and he cleaned me up. Yeah, I get a lot of in a lot of my ministry work, you know, people say, well, I can't come to church. I had one person tell me, well, the building will catch on fire. I'm so bad. <laughs> you know, if I walk through the doors, the building will catch on fire. And there was a part in there where it was just like, oh, my goodness, has church become such a, a place where like I have to pretend to be OK in order to come in? And that's that's not what the church is about. Um, but to say, like, you know, um, I, I loved in the old Billy Graham Crusades when they used to sing just as I am. Mm, yeah. You know, because it is just as I am without a plea, you know, like that Christ still stepped in, you know, and in the middle of my mess, didn't wait for me to get myself together because it's not by works that anyone would boast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just because Jesus, you know, in the fullness, you know, of the power from heaven and earth, you know, combined in one person, like came down and and paid the ultimate price for me just as I am. And that's incredible. Yeah. Well, we have to realize that we can't fix ourselves. That sin nature, we're born with it. Mm hmm. And the only one who can fix it is Jesus Christ. Yep. But he can't fix it unless we let him, unless we invite him in. Yep. Yep. And then even still, right? So there's a part where you say yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you said, like, the, everything doesn't become hunky-dory. You don't lose yeah. some of those bad desires yeah. you have. You don't, like, and God can miraculously take some of those away. But this mm -hmm. is why it's so important now to be in community. Mm -hmm. Because as you're reading the scriptures, as you're digging in, and Jesus is doing that sanctifying work in you, you know, and rooting out some of, cleaning out some of the garbage, well, then in community, as mm -hmm. brothers and sisters in yeah. Christ, I can hold you accountable and I yeah. can be praying for you and asking you how you're doing. You could be praying for me and asking mm -hmm. me. So that that work that's done in salvation, that ongoing work of sanctification where where Jesus is saying, I'm going to refine you if you let me refine you. I'm going to heal things if you let me heal you. Um, you know, that's done, you know, by the power of God, but it's also done in community. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's like when you think about evangelism, I want the people that um, do not know the Lord to have that too. Yes. You know, like you can't get better on your own. Like if you just can't. No. So no, only Jesus can deal with that sin nature. Mm -hmm. That's right. Nobody else can do it. Yep. And so no matter how bad we've been or whatever we've done, we, we have to come to Jesus and let him do it because he's the only one who can. Yep. And that he loves you enough for even the worst possible thing you think that you could have done, that Jesus still went to the cross for you um, and loved you in the middle of that. Yes, absolutely. Well, Roger, do you have any more questions for me in the time we have left? No, but if you'd like to give any closing remarks, you can have the time. <laughs> well, here's what I'd say for, I mean, first of all, thank you. Um, thank you for having me with you. If you have not had an opportunity to say yes to Jesus, know that today might be your day. And if you're listening to this and you're just feeling just something in your heart um, that says like, wow, you know, 
you know, I resonate with what's being said, or there's something that feels tugging at me, this is your time. You could just simply close your eyes and just say, um, Jesus, I know you're speaking to me. I'm a sinner. And I ask that you just come and save me, you know, and just save me by your grace. Help me to know you more, but I submit and surrender to you. You know, would you be the Lord of my life? And if there's somebody that you've been praying for for a long time and you're just like, you don't even know, I've stopped praying. You know, Roger and Elisa, I've been praying for this person for years. Never stop praying because you don't know where God is at in the process of bringing this person closer to them. Um, don't be discouraged by what you see because um, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. And so there's a part we're encouraged to keep praying because we don't know where a person might be in their journey. And the last thing I would say is if like, oh gosh, I said yes to Jesus a long time ago, but I have like not been following him at all. Man, get in community, you know, go back to your story, you know, and then ask, like, ask people that, you know, love Jesus to help hold you accountable um, because the body of Christ needs you. You know, we need you yes. to be um, being discipled and growing in your faith because somebody needs to hear your story. Um, and they've been waiting for you, too. That's so true, because whatever you trials you've been through, that qualifies mm -hmm. you to talk to people who are in the situation you used to be in. Yeah. You know better than anybody how to help them. Yep. And I would say there's some people that feel like I don't have a testimony. At least I grew up in a home. I had both my parents. We were financially okay. I didn't struggle. Um, you know, God's rescuing power is just as potent as his preserving power. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that God had his arms around you in that space, and that's how God ha um, has shown up for you is a testimony to don't feel like you don't have a testimony because nothing bad has happened to you. Or like, I'm, my story is not that bad. Um, God shows up in the big ways. He shows up in the small ways and he shows up in the everyday ways. And that's still, that is still a story for somebody to hear. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining me and doing me the honor of being a guest on my broadcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'd like to thank everybody who watches this, whether live or on the replay. Thank you for watching and pray that all of you get a good night's sleep, wake up refreshed in the morning, ready to face the day. And hope to see all of you on the next broadcast, but until then be blessed.